The endobiogenic approach to medicine offers physicians a way to engage in what we call rational clinical phytotherapy. Phytotherapy refers to the use of medicinal plants in medicine. The term clinical phytotherapy means that various plants are chosen based on specific clinical signs and symptoms and disease patterns in the body. The rational aspect of the selection of the plants is based on a detailed endobiogenic evaluation from the history, the physical, and the biology of functions blood analysis. The use of medicinal plants in endobiogeny is not something which uh, is a sine qua non. It is not something which is required. But we believe that besides the use of pharmaceutical products and standard medical intervention, that medicinal plants offer a unique treatment uh, approach which is not found in other approaches. When we think about the human body, the characteristics of it are that it is complex, it is dynamic, and it has multiple parts which operate in an interdependent and interconnected way. In other words, when there's an increase in adrenal gland activity, it affects how sensitive the body is to the thyroid. It affects the rate of production of estrogen activity. It affects the blood sugar level and how the pancreas functions. This is just one example of how the different endocrine glands and endocrine function are interconnected and interrelated. As one goes up, another hormonal activity is diminished or it is similarly increased. And as, that one, as the second one changes, so does the third and so does the fourth. So if we have a system which is living and dynamic and has a series of interconnected and interrelated parts, if we have a therapeutic option which is similarly dynamic and complex and is able to treat multiple aspects of human physiologic function simultaneously, it could possibly present a uh, optimal or favorable approach to therapy. When you look at a medicinal plant, each plant contains between 10 to 100 active compounds at various different concentration levels. From the perspective of modern pharmacology and modern uh, pharmaceutical products, this is considered to be a distinct disadvantage because the whole basis of the modern pharmaceutical industry and modern medicine is to create uh, a pure synthetic version of a single compound and to apply that compound so it has one effect on one receptor. And then you test it in clinical studies, you determine the precise effect of the one compound on the one receptor, and then you determine the dose and then you use it. Well, this has a certain advantage to using a single compound. And 70 to 80 percent of the uh, pharmaceutical products that we use were derived from plants. But as every physician knows, using a very powerful and synthetic compound increases the likelihood of side effects. And the reason these side effects occur is because the one compound doesn't just affect one receptor. It actually has many different effects directly on different parts of the body that were unanticipated. And by forcibly blocking or forcibly stimulating a single receptor, it has various levels of upstream and downstream responses by the body. And the body's own physiologic attempt to resist the suppression or resist the forced activation of some receptor or some enzymatic activity is what leads to the side effects. In addition to that, if a drug has only one effect and a person has five symptoms, you have to put them on five drugs and each of those drugs has side effects and one or two of those drugs are going to create new diseases that were not present before you started treating with drugs and then you have to add another pharmaceutical product to manage the new disease that was created to manage the other diseases in the first place. Coming back to the discussion of medicinal plants, 
As I mentioned, each medicinal plant has anywhere typically between 10 to 100 active components. Because a medicinal plant has many different compounds, they tend to contain an antidote to their own principal effect. And in this way, they limit uh, excessive activity in the body and tend to be safer to use with lower side effects. Because they contain many different compounds, they're able to work on many different areas of the body simultaneously. And in this way, rather than treating a single symptom, uh, a, a medicinal plant can treat a cluster of symptoms and can treat a group of physiologic disturbances altogether. It is for these reasons that we believe that medicinal plants, when they are applied through a rational clinical assessment of exactly what the patient needs, and when the physician understands from uh, scientific research, clinical experience, and historical usage how to use a plant, they can offer a unique therapeutic approach. I'd like to give you a few examples of how a single medicinal plant can be very efficient in treating various types of physiologic imbalances. When a woman presents with uh, premenstrual syndrome and she complains of breast tenderness, breast swelling, uh, emotional lability, crying easily, irritability, and heavy menstrual flow, if you consider the effects of just one plant, Vitex agnus castus, or chase tree, if you consider the effects of one plant, such as Vitex agnus castus, or chase tree, you see how efficient this single plant is on treating premenstrual dysphoria and premenstrual disorder. According to modern research into the effects of chase tree, it has the ability to modulate prolactin activity, which modulates luteinizing hormone, releasing hormones, ability to stimulate FSH, and it transitions it to stimulating LH, or luteinizing hormone. In this way, it reduces the central hypothalamic and pituitary overstimulation of estrogen production by the ovaries. A chase tree also reduces the sensitivity of estrogen that is produced at the level of estrogen receptors. And in this way, it also reduces the proliferation of the uterine lining and heavy uterine bleeding. A third way in which chase tree uh, helps with premenstrual uh, imbalances is that uh, it alters the level of TRH activity, which is the hypothalamic thyroid hormone, which plays a role in emotional lability and mood swings. And finally, by stimulating prolactin, chase tree stimulates dopamine, and dopamine activity uh, reduces the tendency towards anxiety, and it has a tonic inhibitory effect on all the hypothalamic and pituitary hormones. In this way, the general hormonal overproduction that is seen in premenstrual states can be regulated in the most profound and central way by dopamine, in a way which is natural and dynamic and allows the body to determine how much regulation it needs. From the perspective of clinical trials, chase tree is one of the most uh, well-researched medicinal plants in the English and German uh, literature. And there are many studies demonstrating its positive effects in mastodynia, in premenstrual dysphoria, in premenstrual syndrome, as well as uh, cases of uh, heavy menstrual bleeding. Another good example of a medicinal plant which is very efficient would be Salvia officinalis, which is known as garden sage or Dalmatian sage. Salvia officinalis has effects on all four lines of endocrine function. At the level of the corticotropic axis, Salvia officinalis supports the general functioning of the adrenal cortex and improves the production of cortisol and other adrenal hormones. At the level of the gonadotropic axis, Salvia officinalis, or SAGE, stimulates the production and the activity of estrogen within the cell. At the level of the thyrotropic activity, 
in part because of the trace minerals that it contains and other compounds, sage can help stimulate the thyroid and allow for better uh, regulation of the production of thyroid hormones. So again, just to give you an example of this concept of coupling or associated activity, uh, when estrogen activity improves, you need to have sufficient thyroid activity to provide the energy for estrogen to stimulate the anabolism or construction of cellular proteins. So this is a good example of how just using this one plant, sage, you couple together two key endocrine functions which need to work step by step together. And then finally, sage uh, improves insulin sensitivity at the cell membrane level and in this way it helps regulate the somatotropic axis as well. In addition to all of these effects on the endocrine system, sage also uh, helps support the liver, it detoxifies the liver, it improves the production and excretion of bile according to research studies, and it also acts as an antiviral agent as well and a general uh, immune support. So in this way we see that a single plant has many different levels of activity and it proves itself to be very efficient at low doses. There are many different ways in which medicinal plants can be used and initially this can um, uh, provide some challenges for physicians to understand the various galenical forms or forms of preparation. But the many different ways in which plants can be used is again part of their versatility because different types of preparations cost more or cost less. Uh, cost less. Different types of preparations have different uh, compounds that are extracted and they can be better for uh, different types of disorders. And they also offer different levels of uh, ease of use for patients depending on their lifestyle, their time, their budget, and other considerations. Medicinal plants uh, can be used dry as herbs. They can be used as a tisane or a tisane, which is a, a water-based extraction. They can be used as a decoction, depending on the part of the plant that you use, uh, which would be actively boiling the plant. They can be used as a, as a tincture, where alcohol and water are used to extract uh, various compounds. Some plants can be used as an essential oil. And uh, there are new forms of uh, plant extract preparation that can also be used, including microspheres which is a highly stable and dry form of tinctures.